What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hope you like this uh, video. <clears throat> Excuse me. All my social media is in my description box. So look, this is Chasing Atlanta season three, episode twelve. I think I'll check it. Um, I think this is the last episode. Yeah, because the reunion is next week. Yeah, the reunion I believe is next weekend. So I believe this was the last episode. Maybe. Maybe we'll get one more on Wednesday. Maybe. Um, they said they weren't even going to drop an episode this week, but because the, you know, the demand was so high, they went on and did it. And I'm glad they did, because this was actually pretty good. Um, you can tell that this episode was filmed pretty recently because they addressed the whole, or at least this, some of the scenes were, because they addressed the whole little Kendra Charity, Wayne the Pain concert debacle situation. But we'll get to that in a second. So let's start off. Um, we see a little bit of We Were Born in Troy at the beginning of the episode. They're, they're doing some charity work at a homeless drop-in center for teens, um, LGBTQ uh, teens. And, you know, it was very heartbreaking on a lot of different levels. It was heartbreaking because they had mentioned that, the there's a, and this is something I, I guess I just never paid attention to, the difference between a drop-in shelter and a shelter shelter. So a drop-in center, I guess is a better word. They're only open for certain hours. They're not an overnight shelter. So um, teens can come in, they can get showers, they can get food, they can watch TV, they can chill out for the day, but they can't spend the night because the center actually closes. And one of the first things that was heartbreaking for me was they made mention that the city of Atlanta has closed a lot of the teen shelter, not a lot, I shouldn't say, I think they said two shelters that were for teens. Because the problem is, if you're under 18, then you don't qualify, I guess, because you're not an adult. And then if you're over 18 and you're younger, they were saying, you know, you're fighting with the older people who know the system, who know the ropes, and you're fighting for beds. And they say how they really hate to put them out, but, you know, it is what it is. It, it only operates for certain hours. Um... The other thing that was heartbreaking to find out that we were born, they met at a similar shelter situation. Both of them were homeless at the time. And, you know, both of them have been on the street, lived, you know, um, couch, uh, couch surfed or slept on a train or um, slept in stairwells and things of that nature. And um, it makes you understand maybe a little bit more why Jay Twine is the way he is, if he's had to fight, if he's had to feel attacked if he's had to, you know, when you have to go through certain situations, it makes you the way you are. And I always knew there was a story behind J. Twan. Don't get me wrong. I always knew there was a reason why he acted the way he acted. But when you hear the story, it just, it gives you a different, a different little insight. Um, the other thing that was heartbreaking about that whole scene was... <sighs> I will never understand how you can hate something you gave birth to. I will never understand it. A lot of LGBTQ teens find themselves on the street. A lot of it is because of family rejection. We know that there are other factors. It's not, I'm not saying that that's 100% of the reason, but a lot of it is through family rejection. And I will never, I will never understand it. And granted, I ain't never gave birth to nobody, but I know I could never turn away my cousins. I know I could never turn away my little nieces and nephews. You know what I'm saying? For something like that. But you will have parents that will defend a murderer. Their child could go out here and kill somebody, and they'd be on the news talking about he was framed, he was set up, he was really a good kid, he made the honor roll of fifth grade. But we'll put they, that same child on the street if they come home and say, but mama, I like boys. I know I killed somebody last week and you was defending me, but guess what? I got a boyfriend. And now all of a sudden, we'll get your ass out. We'll never understand that. I will never be able to wrap my brain around it. And there's nothing that a, pa that a parent can say to me to make me understand it. So it's heartbreaking on so many different levels. But it was great to see them doing some charity work. It was great to see we were born um, in the season. If this was the last episode, it was great to see them in the season on a good note because that is definitely a good look 
Um, Cause I know they're gonna act a fool at the damn reunion. I already know. They done got rid of Devon and they done got a Jaytuan. Cause if they thought Devon was a damn Tasmanian devil, honey. Now rumor is that they're not coming to the reunion. That might be for the best. That might be for the best. Uh, then we have a scene with Q and um, Troy. Troy, you know, we knew that Troy worked retail and that he was a manager doing some really good things, moving on up in his career. And he's a looks like he's a store manager or at least a section manager at Dillard's. And if you're not familiar with Dillard's, Dillard's is a, a pretty um pretty it's a high end um department store. Like it's not a JC Penny, you know what I mean? Um when I I'd never heard of Dillard's until I moved until I lived down south. But Dillard's is, it's like a, a maybe a, a rung or two higher than a Macy's. You know, it's not Neiman Marcus, but it's not JCPenney. You know what I mean? So that that's that's great. That's a great accomplishment. Um, Troy is still young. He said he's only been working for the company like a year and a half. So that's definitely a great accomplishment. And that definitely shows that he got some hustle on him. Um, and him and Q were talking. Q came down to go to come to check him out. And a couple of things we find out in this conversation. They rehashed the whole Gardini thing, which I'm done. I'm like Q. I'm done talking about it. You were mad because Gardini was there. And Q explained. Q was like, look, I had texted Gardini. Gardini ain't texted me back. And if anybody knows, Gardini knows that he is not a morning person. So when I didn't hear from him, I just assumed he wasn't coming. So it was with no malice or anything else that I didn't tell you that Gardini was coming. I honestly didn't think he was coming. And when he showed up, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And Troy admitted that it really wasn't that big of a deal, what he said. It was just a point that I told you I didn't want to be around him. And I felt like you sort of, I'm putting words in his mouth, but sort of set me up to be around him. But they were able to sort of talk that out. And then they had a really good conversation about <clears throat> fathers. And, you know, Q was explaining how him and his father came a long way. He said, you know, my father was, my father was always in the house, but I didn't have a father. And I think, again, a lot of people deal with that situation. And I'm sure Q's situation was a little different because they had conflicts about other things. But a lot of times you have a man in the house, but that doesn't mean you have a father. Because And, and it, sometimes it could be very innocent. He out there hustling and grinding and making sure the family's taken care of and he ain't got time to be daddy. I'm not, you know what I mean? Sometimes they don't know how to be daddy there. Don't have, they were not taught how to emotionally be there for somebody. So they don't know how to be there for the, you know what I mean? There are different reasons why things happen the way they happen. But what I liked was that Q was saying that him and his dad have come such a long way and that they were able to build this friend, this relationship and how he really wanted the crew to meet his dad and really have that. And so Troy talked a little bit about not really having, you know, having those same challenges with having a father figure growing up or what have you. And then he, he kind of hits Q with a, so the streets is talking, the streets saying that, you know, you got a little crush on Troy. What's up with that? Now we know that Q has had a situation with um, him and his boyfriend going through some problems and then coming back to a really good place. I don't really think Q was really trying to go down that route, but he was real nice about it. And he was real polite about it. But the Q was, oh, not Q like the person, but like your Q taking your cue like stage cue was when he at the, when they were leaving he hugged Troy and he he made mention about he said something about um um anytime you need a big brother talk that's letting you know you have been you have been little brother zoned you know how some people can be friend zoned you have been little brother zoned and I think that was Q's nice way of saying yes I think you're attractive and I think you're a cutie I don't think we need to go down that road now again what happened behind closed doors behind closed doors but at least publicly, that's how I took it. Uh, then we get to the juicy stuff, okay? Those two, those first two scenes were, okay, that's cute. But here come the juicy stuff. Oliver meets with Lauren. And how, Oliver breaks down the whole situation of what happened with this little Kendra concert. Because I was curious my damn self, okay? So from what I can pick up. Kendra got arrested for whatever she got arrested for. I heard it's drugs, but I don't know, so I, I I don't know what she got arrested for. Okay. Bail was set. She can't make bail. And I've already talked in another video about maybe it was for a different show. I'm not sure about how I think that in our criminal justice system that is just bullshit. That if you're innocent until until proven guilty and you ain't been convicted of shit, 
why you can't come home. But that's another conversation. Neither here nor there, they can't make her bail. So what Oliver said is that when he was in New York doing the Queen Supreme Court, which if you follow T.S. Madison, you know around what time that was. That was a couple of months ago. Um, it was like two weeks before Mother's Day. Yeah. It was like two weeks before Mother's Day because they were in Mother's Day for Charlotte. I mean, they were in Charlotte for Mother's Day. And Memphis, I want to say Memphis was somewhere in the middle of that. I don't know. But I know it was about two weeks before Mother's Day, maybe three. So that's just giving you a timeline. He said that Wayne the Pain called him and basically said, I need some help. And nobody's really helping me. And, you know, production's not doing anything. Nobody's doing anything. And I need help trying to get Kendra out of jail. Oliver said, look, I'm on the road right now. I really can't deal with, you know, I really can't help you right now. When I get back to Atlanta, we can sit down and hash something out. But in the meantime, this is what I know I can do. I can design some t-shirts, put it on my website, I put it on my merch website. You guys can, you know, advertise it, put, you know, publicize it, get it out there. And whatever money I make off the t-shirts, I'll give it to you to go towards the fund. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you did good. You did good. You did a lot. I think that was great. I think that was a great idea. And in my, as far as I'm concerned, you could have stopped right there. Because your merch page is popping. People are buying your merch. And people from the show who support the show would have bought it just to support, you know, just Lil' Kendra. Just like people are get putting, were putting money on her cash app and everything else. So, um, I feel like you did yours. But, to take it a step further, somewhere in that Oliver traveling, phone calls going back and forth. Oliver, Lauren, was it We Were Born? Decided that they were going to do the concert. Oliver was planning the concert. See, it wasn't a Wayne the Pain production. It was what they were doing for the for Lil' Kendra and they were doing the show. Now, in the midst of all this happening, some interviews went down on The Wiley Show. If y'all don't know what The Wiley Show is, he has a YouTube channel. You can check him out on his YouTube channel. But um, there were some interviews that were done and some some things were being said. And, um, Wayne DePayne went on there and basically said nobody was helping him except for Gardini. And Oliver was like, what? Say what? Say what? Nobody's helping you except for Gardini. I... I'm planning a whole concert. Like, what you talking about? So, then Oliver went on the Wiley show to, I guess, defend himself and rebut. Somehow, again, somehow or another, Wayne the Pain and called Oliver to cuss him out. Kendra's sister called Oliver to cuss him out. Then Kendra called Oliver to cuss him out. So, at the end of all of this, Oliver was like, I tell you what, you ain't got to worry about me doing nothing else for you. Like, it is what it is. You don't want my help. It's cool. Now, he said he was still going to do the concert. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because I feel like you got off that phone call and you was probably like, screw all of this and I'm done. But we know that Wayne DePayne was the one who canceled the concert. Next thing he said, next thing he know, Wayne DePayne posted on his Instagram that the concert is canceled. And he was like, how you going to cancel something you didn't schedule? Like, you didn't plan this. You didn't have nothing to do with this. How you canceling something that you didn't do? And Lauren was like, you know... You can't blame anybody else for her problems. Like, if people want to help, they can help. But you can't make it seem like somebody was obligated to help you. Production ain't obligated to help Kendra. Nobody's obligated to help her just because we know her from the show and we were cool with her or whatever. We were doing this because out of the goodness of our heart, trying to help her out. But nobody owed nobody nothing. And I 100% understand. Like, y'all... You know, y'all know Lauren ain't always been my favorite person, but these last couple of weeks, I'm like, yes, sister, amen, and come on, because I 100% agree. She said, you know, Kendra's in jail for decisions she made. She ain't wrongly, well, she innocent to a proven guilty, so let me not say that, but it's not like she's there because she was mistaken as a, a prostitute and she got picked up. It was like a tranny bashing situation. I'm sorry, I shouldn't use that word. I'll take that back. A, um, transgender bashing situation. I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean these words. Um, you know what I mean? It wasn't like a mistaken identity. It wasn't none of that. Like, there are some serious charges from my understanding. Again, innocent to approve guilty. However, 
you the one that can't make bail. So if anything, you should be thankful to anybody that's willing to put five cent on your your cash app, much less buy a t-shirt, buy a ticket to a concert, whatever. So it, it sounds like it's just some real messy shit. And let me tell y'all something. It's going to come out wrong. It's going to come out wrong, but oh well, it's just going to have to come out. You know, you can't take everybody out. The, you just can't take everybody out the hood. You just cannot. And I said this even before with, with Kendra, and they don't have nothing to do with her lifestyle. It's about her attitude. It's about her attitude. Nobody owe you shit. In any situation, don't nobody owe you shit. And I, I just feel like she just has this entitled, even like I said, even going back to the beginning of all of this, this this entitled attitude, like somebody owes her something, like owe oh, you nothing. But anyway, that's the drama on that. Then we get to the last scene, which is honey. That could have, mm, I needed some popcorn. They didn't, I wasn't ready. Let me tell y'all something. I'm scared of Sky. Sky's demeanor and mannerism and how he talks and how he presents himself. It's so calm and so direct that it is scary. Y'all know what I'm saying. It was Sky and Cameron. And basically what Sky was saying was, Cameron, you full of shit and you're a liar. And he said, you know, when you came back to me and told me about that conversation you had with Q, you made it seem like they brought my name up. But come to find out, you brought my name up. He said, you know, last year when all this shit was going down, I never blasted you. I never put you out there. I never put you on front street. I never put your business out there. But somehow or another, it seemed like you trying to put me out there. He said, you know... And then he started, he said, I never put your business out there. I never spilled no tea. But you know what? If you want to put it out there, let's put it out there. And honey, he talked about how Cameron, I guess him and Scott was supposed to be messing around or something. And he said how Cameron told him he was going to LA for work. Come, and he said, you came back with a whole boyfriend. And I didn't know nothing about it until I saw it on Instagram. But you told me you was going out there for work. But we supposed to be trying to date. We supposed to be trying to work things out. He said, you know, um... You said I never supported you while you were going through your chemo, but we sat on the phone for hours at a time crying and, and, and praying. And Cameron was like, we did? We did? He was like, oh, 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 we didn't? Oh, we didn't? He said, um, he talked about, you know, how last year, he said, you know, how Cameron, Cameron kind of got that Camille thing. If you watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, it's like he loyal to who he in the room with is what Sky was saying. That, you know, you, you cool with who you with. But we know what's really going on. Like, you got this image you're trying to put out there on the show and portray yourself a certain way. But we know the real camera. We know what's really going on. Um, he said, you know, you out there last year making it seem like I wasn't, I didn't have your back. I wasn't supporting you. Um, but you was in my DMs trying to get in my bed. I said, oh. So, honey, Scott was putting it all out there. But I could tell Scott was hurt. You know, he was hurt. And, you know, he was like, it just seemed like he said Cameron want to be with the with the with the um popular crew and whoever he feel like is the popular kids that's what he he gonna do and he gonna throw whoever he got throw over the under the bus to get there and so it was a very interesting conversation and Cameron ain't have a whole lot to say honey he did he did try to defend himself a few times but it seemed like he just wasn't ready for Sky he was not ready for Sky honey Sky was coming he came with double barrel blazing he was ready. So that was tonight's episode. Like I said, I do, I don't think we're gonna get another episode before the reunion, which is next weekend. So I'm sure Instagrams and lives and Facebook lives and all these other lives are gonna be lit for the next week where everybody getting in their last little two cents before we get to the reunion, honey. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments, peace.